fetch me my sedative. I'm Professor Presley. Thank you for joining me this evening. Tonight we'll be talking about the Grinch and I will uh, share with you my piece on the Grinch. Uh, so spoilers for movies and the books and everything that has to do with Grinch. This year is Grinchmas, so go and read all that stuff because you gotta watch all that stuff. What if it's all just a misunderstanding? This could change my entire outlook on life. Really? No. <laughs> so without further ado, this is my piece on this, uh, on the Grinch. <clears throat> Hope you like it. The Song Spell of the Grinch by Professor Presley. Unveiling the Sinister Spell of Whoville. My theory proposes that the Grinch was hypnotized by the hypnotic song Hoorah Toorah sung by the Who's of Whoville. This enchanting melody is believed to cast a spell compelling the Grinch to conform to traditional holiday standards, creating a calm and happy Christmas for the Who's. Was there more to that spell of song that meets the eye? Let's delve into the dark secrets of Whoville as we explore the theory that the Who's enslave the Grinch for their own sinister purposes. Oh yeah. Oh, they knew that they were doing. Yeah. Thank you. One. The hypnotic spell. My theory suggests that the song Hoorah, Toorah, possesses hypnotic qualities, effectively casting a spell. This magical tune compels him to conform to the traditional standards upheld by the Who's, ensuring a calm and joyous Christmas celebration. The Grinch's deep-rooted hatred for the song stems from his subconscious resistance to this mysterious enchantment. Remember, it's the noise. The noise. Singing wakes him. And at the end, he's singing again the same song. And by that time, oh yes, the Grinch. Even the Grinch was carving the <coughs> roast beast. It was said that his heart three sizes that day. But why the sudden change? He had known the Who's his whole life. Why the change? The Grinch's hypnotism theory suggests that the Grinch was subjected to a hypnotic spell cast by the Who's of Whoville. While this theory may seem far-fetched, it is worth exploring the possibility of hypnotic manipulation in the Grinch story. One, the power of suggestion. Hypnotism operates on the principle of suggestion where individuals are susceptible to external influences and can be led to behave in certain ways. In the Grinch story, we see the Who's of Whoville singing their festive song with great enthusiasm <laughs> and unity. The repetitive and catchy nature of the song could potentially have a hypnotic effect on the Grinch. Possibly other who's. Who's to say? This effect would make the Grinch more receptive to their ideas and their exploit their expectations of conformity to altered <laughs> perception. If we consider the Grinch's drastic change in behavior, it is possible that the hypnotic spell altered his perception of Christmas. <laughs> the Grinch, initially repulsed by the excesses of the holiday, becomes a convert overnight 
This sudden transformation can be explained by the power of hypnotism, which can change one's thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes. Three, resistance and struggle. The Grinch's initial resistance to the Who's hypnotic influence is evident in his attempts to disrupt their celebrations. However, as the story progresses, we see him grappling with conflicting emotions and inclinations. This internal struggle could be interpreted as the battle between the hypnotic suggestion and the Grinch's true nature. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> as he attempts to break free from the spell. Four. Liberation and redemption. In the end, the Grinch manages to overcome the hypnotic manipulation and experiences a profound change of heart. This liberation could be seen as the breaking of the hypnotic spell, allowing the Grinch to rediscover the true meaning of Christmas and embrace love and compassion. While the Grinch hypnotism theory may be speculative, it adds an intriguing layer to the story. It invites us to question the nature of the Grinch's transformation and consider the possibility of external manipulation. Whether or not hypnotism was involved, the Grinch story ultimately teaches us the importance of love. This effect would make the Grinch more receptive to their ideas and their, expe their expectations of conformity. Two, altered perception. If we consider the Grinch's drastic change in behavior, it is possible that the hypnotic spell altered his perception of Christmas. The Grinch, initially repulsed by the excesses of the holiday, becomes a convert overnight. This sudden transformation can be explained by the power of hypnotism, which can change one's thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes. Three, resistance and struggle. The Grinch's initial resistance to the Who's hypnotic influence is evident in his attempts to disrupt their celebrations. However, as the story progresses, we see him grappling with conflicting emotions and inclinations. This internal struggle could be interpreted as the battle between the hypnotic suggestion and the Grinch's true nature. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> as he attempts to break free from the spell. Four. Liberation and redemption. In the end, the Grinch manages to overcome the hypnotic manipulation and experiences a profound change of heart. This liberation could be seen as the breaking of the hypnotic spell, allowing the Grinch to rediscover the true meaning of Christmas and embrace love and compassion. While the Grinch hypnotism theory may be speculative, it adds an intriguing layer to the story. It invites us to question the nature of the Grinch's transformation and consider the possibility of external manipulation. Whether or not hypnotism was involved, the Grinch story ultimately teaches us the importance of love, acceptance, and the transformative power of kind. As part of their plan, the Who's drug the Grinch and return him to his isolated lair on Mount Crumpet under the watchful eye of his loyal companion, Max. This ensures that the spell remains intact and the Grinch remains oblivious to the truth behind his noisy Christmases. It is the singing and the noise that enrages him. Earlier and earlier each year, the noise wakes him up because Christmas starts earlier and earlier each year. And each year he awakens from the hibernation from which he was put. He cannot resist. Three. The Who's sinister motives. But why would the Who's go to such lengths to control the Grinch? My theory suggests that the Who's, in the pursuit of a calm and flawless Christmas, have secretly enslaved the Grinch over the years by manipulating the Grinch into believing he is stealing Christmas. They exploit him. Why would they do that? Why 
would they do that? Well, you see, every year, they make him believe that he's stealing Christmas, when really he's just cleaning up. And they let him. And he takes the toys and all of the things up to Mount Crumpet. And then the drugs take their effect. And depending on where he has left the items that he stole, they either go and retrieve them or wait to wake him up with the song, which grows his heart three sizes. And he brings all the presents back and he helps them decorate and puts it all up. And that night, he carves the roast beast. <clears throat> By manipulating the Grinch into believing he is stealing Christmas, they exploit him to clean up after their extravagant celebrations. This reveals a darker side of Whoville, where a facade of holiday cheer conceals a sinister underbelly. Four, the spell's expiry. The spell's effects eventually wear off, releasing the Grinch from its grip approximately one month before Christmas. Something, sensing something amiss, Max, the Grinch's loyal companion, warns the Who's of impending danger. Remember who? Remember that Max is a Max is a, Max is a good guy. He's a good boy. This serves as a catalyst for the Who's to prepare for the Grinch's return. And every, every who is encouraged to sing and give holiday cheer. And to keep the Grinch at bay. To keep him away. Hating the who's, not wanting to come down. Because they're singing and they're talking. And they're pantuculars. And all of those things, all their noisemakers, they drive him up the mountain. The thing he hates, the noise, they keep him away. Until that song, until the gentle song, until the singing, the singing, the singing that calls the Grinch down. Hoorah, hoorah. When you think of the Who's sinister plan, it is important to remember that all men are created equal, especially under American law. So it is important to remember that we are all together on this journey. But the Who's, I mean, who knows about the Who's, right? What do they have in their constitution? <sighs> Thanks for stopping by today. Please like, subscribe, and share.